So let us quickly turn our Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. Let us read from verse 12 onwards to 14. The Gospel of Matthew 21, 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Next verse. And he said to them, it is written, for my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You see clearly, Jesus was angry when he came and he saw the temple which has been consecrated or being dedicated to his father. You see what he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. They were selling, they were buying, they were doing all types of things way in the house of God. You know something, if you defile the body of Christ or if you defile the church, the anger of God will come upon you because God does not tolerate. Why? Because he says this house is known as the house of prayer. If you go deeper in Isaiah 56, 7, he says, for my house shall be called house of prayer for all nations. That means when you come to the church, that's when you start praying for all the nations. Hallelujah. And that's what God is looking. If you look at Isaiah 66, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and the sacrifice will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer. For all nations, that means the house of God is there for people to pray and to intercede for all the nations of the world. Amen. But what they are doing down the road, uh, they are defiling the church. Hallelujah, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's where the church is now being defiled. There is no more holiness in the church. There is no more fear of God in the church. There is no more the right doctrine or the apostles doctrine that are being preached in the church, my brother. Because everyone is looking for his own benefit. Everyone is looking for his own gain. You know how it became now the church. It became too much commercial. It became business. Nowadays churches, what happened? It became business. But during the time of Acts the Apostles, you know what they did? They did three things which is being recorded in the Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Let's see what does the word of the Lord says clearly. Let's see. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. And he said to the, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, first thing, fellowship, and in a breaking of bread. Hallelujah. These three things they did, what they did, there was pray, there was the doctrine of apostles, and fellowship where? In the early church. And where was the church formed? After the day of Pentecost, and they walked in the fear of God. But nowadays, my brother and sister in Christ, what happened? You know how the church has become. If you look into the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3, God speaks of how many churches you know there? Seven churches. Seven churches. And in the seven churches, one church is there, which is uh, the Paragamos, which we know is a compromising uh, church. Hallelujah. If you look into Revelation chapter 2, verse 14 and 16, see what the Spirit of the Lord Oh, the angel of the Lord is saying, if you look into that, he says, I have a few things against you because you have those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and committed a uh, sexual immorality. And this is a compromising church, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's what we see, that the Spirit of the Lord in the book of Revelation is rebuking to the church in Paragamos. He says, you are teaching the doctrine of Balaam. That means your doctrine is not right. Why? Because in the last days, what will happen? For many will be start preaching the doctrine of Balaam. Clearly, my brother and sister in Christ. And you must be uh, very careful. That was in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, in the latter days, what they will preach in the church. So how they are defiling the churches, that's what today the word of the Lord is going to minister to each one of us. Let us look into 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. See here, Paul is writing 
from prison is writing to Timothy, his beloved son in the Lord. He says, now the spirit expresses saying that in the later times that many will depart from their faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now the doctrine where in early church, the doc they had the apostle doctrine that was given to them by God through the Holy Spirit. And while they had the doctrine, because we all know that after the resurrection, that Jesus Christ has spent 40 days ministering to the disciples regarding the word of God and giving them the doctrine. Amen. But yeah, Hallelujah. what uh, Paul is telling to Timothy is telling in the later days, uh, they will depart. They will depart from their faith, give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience served with a hot iron. Hallelujah. So what is LA? They will have their own doctrine. They will tell whatever they like in the church. Because you know why? They don't have the fear of God. When they stand behind the pulpit, they will minister however they think is good for them. And they will minister what the people like, not what God likes. Hallelujah. They will minister to what uh, God, the people like and not what God likes. And that's very much important, my brother. But Jesus is not going to be silent. You know why? Why is not going to be silent? Because if you look into Acts chapter 20 verse 28, uh, we see that the church has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, and that's what... Uh, Jesus was angry when they defiled the temple of his father. You say clearly, let's look into that. Therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseas to shepherd the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. That means the church of God has been purchased through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that's why he didn't want them to defile the temple of his father. And that's why he started to take whips and he started to drive them out. Why? Because they were making a business out of a thing. The place which had to be sanctified, the place which had to be holy, the house that had to be a house of prayer. That's what for all nations. But here what they are trying to do? They are trying to make a, it a business place. And that's what today my brother and sister in Christ, that the latter churches have become a thing of business. They are making business out of the church. It becomes so commercially. They think, oh, the devil is outside. The devil is normal outside. Where is the devil? The devil is already in the church. That's why I will tell any pastor who is standing here or any priest or anything who is standing here, he can take the church to heaven and he can also take the church to hell. Hallelujah. That's why I will always say never ever follow a priest. I will never say never ever follow a pastor. Follow the word of God. When anyone stands behind this pulpit and minister the word of God, you must check it. From the word of God. You need to check from the Bible. Is this person telling is exactly according to what the Bible speaks. Because during the time of Beria. The word of the Lord says in Acts of the Apostle chapter 17 verse 11. The people of Beria were fair minded and open minded and broad minded. When Paul was ministering to them. They were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica. That they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. They searched the scripture. They looked into the Bible to see that though Paul was a mighty man, he was a learned person, he had a PhD degree. But still, they looked into the Bible to see that what this preacher is telling, is it exactly according to the word of God? My brother and sister in Christ, you need to follow the word of God. You don't have to follow a ministry. You don't have to follow a pastor or a bishop or an apostle or whoever it may be. You must follow the word of God because the word of God will take you to righteousness, my brother and sister in Jesus Christ. And that is very much important. But today we see what happened clearly that they are defiling up the body of Christ. Hallelujah, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's what happened even during the time of Eli. God was angry with Eli the priest. If you look into 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, you see what they are doing, these people. They are so wicked, the sons of a priest called Eli. If you look into 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, see here. So I said to them, Why do you do such things? For I heard of your evil dealing from all the people. Next verse, let's see what. Now, well, I was very old uh, and he heard everything that his son did to all Israel and how they lay with the woman who assembled at the door of the tabernacles of meeting. Uh, these sons of the of the priest Eli, they are sleeping with the woman where? In the tabernacle. They are sleeping in the house of God. 
the defiling the house of God. So see how he says, No, my son, it is not good a report that I hear that you make the Lord's people transgress against God. You say they were not only evil, they were wicked. Who? The sons of this priest. Hallelujah, my brother and sister. Till God was angry with them. In verse 29, see what did he, God then uh, spoke and rebuked the, uh, the, the priest Eli. See what he said clearly. What he said, why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling place? And honor your son more than me to make yourself fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel of my people. But the word of the Lord says, for whoever honors me, next word is there. For whoever honors me, I will honor them. See what he says, therefore the Lord said to Israel, said, I need that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far it be for me. Those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. My brother and sister in Christ, what do we understand by this scripture? What do we understand over here? What were they doing in the house of God? What they are doing and that's what today we see my brother and sister in Christ. Now there are many seducing spirits which are already operating in the body of Christ. There are many seducing spirits in the church. The priest is defiling himself. Here we see the people are defiling themselves my brother and sister in Christ. And that's way Jesus is rebuking. He is rebuking. You know why? Because he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But in need, what you all are trying to do, you are making it to, into a den of thieves, my brother and sister in Christ. Because you have to give an account. Because you know, the house of God was not ordinary. That's why when Jesus Christ asked to Peter, who do you say I am? And what Jesus answered, let us look into Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 and 19. Let's look into the gospel of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. See what Jesus Christ said over here. Let us read what the word of the Lord says clearly. Also I said to you that you shall be Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. He says clearly. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Was given to who? To Peter. He said, upon this rock, here again Jesus is telling, I will build my church. Amen. So how does Jesus' church need to be? It needs to be without stain. It needs to be without blemish. Because why? I showed you in Acts chapter 20 verse 28 that he has purchased it with his blood hallelujah so if you defile the body of christ if you defile the church if there is sin dealing you think jesus christ will just tolerate and keep quiet no because it is his church why because he has purchased it with the blood of what the blood which he shed on carefully my brother and sister in christ and that's why today we must be very fear that's why when we come to the house of god we need to prepare ourselves we cannot just come and do whatever we like that's what when even God called Moses on Mount Sinai. He said, remove your sandals, the place where you are standing uh, is holy ground. He said, you just cannot come however you like. Because I am a God is the holy God. Amen. You cannot come and do whatever you like in the body of Christ and think it's okay. Because you are under the grace of God. Amen. But if you do it in the Old Testament, I am telling you. God will have killed you. That's what happened to Aaron's son. What happened to Aaron's son? Amen. They were anointed to be priest like the father Aaron. But they said, let us offer profane fire before the Lord. The Bible says that the anger of the Lord came and before the father, he killed both of his sons. Why? Because God did not tell them to offer profane fire. They said, oh, it's for God. Whatever we do, God will be happy. No, in the Old Testament, it was not like that. That's why clear instructions were given. Even building of the tabernacle, clear instructions and measurements and everything was given. And they had to do exactly how God wanted it. His way and not your way. But nowadays in the New Testament, you are not having God's way, but you are having it your way. Many churches you see today, they are still following tradition. They are still following customs like the Pharisees. That's why when he looked at the Pharisees, uh, he rebuked them. Because they were very particular in cleaning themselves, cleaning their legs, cleaning their hands, wearing white clothes and doing all stuff. That's why they had a complaint against the disciples of Jesus. 
You said, Master, what they came and they said, Teacher, why are you not rebuking? Huh? Why are you not rebuking your disciples? Because you see, they don't wash their hands, they don't wash their legs, they're not clean. Huh? They just eat at whatever is being offered to them. But what Jesus Christ says, by cleaning your hands and cleaning your legs and cleaning your body, you become because whatever defiles the person is the one that comes from your heart. So the Pharisees, they thought they were too righteous during the time of Jesus Christ. As today we see that many people, they think they are too righteous before the eyes of God. And God is rebuking him. So when Jesus looked at the Pharisees, he says, you vipers, you brooks. You what he said? You vipers, you brooks, you hypocrite. You are like whitewashed tombs. He said, outward you appear to be beautiful, but inside uh, you are dead bones. He said them. In Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23, we see Jesus rebuked them. But everything they said, the law of Moses said this, the law of Moses said that. They are quoting the Bible. Like nowadays, many people quote the Bible. But what is the problem? Their lives have not been changed. Their lives have not been transformed. Like Jesus Christ, my brother and sister in Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the life of Paul was totally transformed. He says it no longer I live it, but Christ that liveth in me because I have been crucified like Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. People could see Christ in Paul. People could see Christ in Stephen. When they were stoning Stephen, his face was like an angel. Like an angel, they could see Christ. When uh, Moses had an encounter with God, uh, he had to cover his face because the glory of God was upon Moses. Their lives are totally changed and transformed, my brother and sister in Christ. But today, we do not see any reformation, we do not see any transformation, we don't see anything happening uh, in the body of Christ. The way you come is the way you go, the things you still do. And that's what today the Lord is speaking to each one of us. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is there to rebuke the church because he is fed up with what uh, we are doing in the body of Christ. Because there is no more holiness in the body of Christ. I'm telling you my brother and sister inside. That's why today I always say that uh, that if you are, you need to be connected with the right people. You need to be connected with the right fellowship. Uh, you need to be connected with the people where the spirit of the Lord is moving. That's why they are not every church uh, that has the spirit of God. That's why the Bible clearly says that in the book of Revelation, there is also a dead church. The church is totally dead. But he says, you think I'm alive. You see clearly my brother and sister in Christ. That's what even uh, the Bible clearly says. The God said, the day you eat the tree of the garden, the fruit of the garden, you will die. He's not speaking of physical death. God was not speaking of physical death to Adam because if he was speaking of physical death, then Adam and he would have died. He says, the day you eat the fruit of the garden, you will die, means as means you will be disconnected from God. God's spirit uh, will be disconnected. And that's what happened, my brother and sister, that many today are disobeying God. And that's what even God said to King Saul. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When he disobeyed, you know what happened? The spirit of the Lord left King Saul. Amen. Hallelujah. Bible clearly says, everything is in the word of God. And today... God is concerned about his church, my brother and sister in Christ. And today, you just not cannot come and dance and do a stuff which God does not like. Because even nowadays, many people, they come and they will sing and they will play music and they are not even uh, saved, they are not even born again. Yeah. But during the time of King David, 1 Chronicles uh, 16 was... Uh, Two, let us, one and two, let us read from there. First Chronicles chapter 16 from one and two. See, how, who are these people? Who are these people? Let us look into that. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse one and two. Now concerning First Chronicles chapter 16, verse one and two. So they brought the ark of the covenant, the ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tabernacle that David has erected for it. Then they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Next verse. And when David has finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Let's look verse 4. <coughs> And he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to commemorate, to thanks, to praise the Lord God of Israel. Next word. And who are these people? As the Asaph, the chief, and next to him was Zechariah, then Zehil, then Simoramoth, then Jehil, then Mathetai, 
Hilab, Benaya and Obed Enoch jailed with string instrument and harp but Asaf made music with cymbals. Now who these people are who are playing music in the church? They are the sons of Levi. Amen. They had a relationship with God. They are not unbelievers and unsaved and you bring someone in there. Oh, he is musician, he can play. No! You are defiling the body of Christ by bringing a foreigner over there, my brother and sister in Christ. Because the people who played music were not unbelievers. They were Levites. See, Bible says they were Levites in verse 4. It says, they were Levites. Asaph. Asaph is the one who also wrote a certain amount of psalms he has written. Clear. Asaph the chief. You see clearly. We see them. Then we see the son of Korah. We see all these people during the time of David and during the time of Solomon. They were from the tribe of Levi. And who were the tribe of Levi? Among the 12 tribes of Israel, God separated the tribe of Levi. He says, for I will be your inheritance, for you will not possess the land. Amen. Bible says clearly, who are, they are the Levites. And these are appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. So not an unbeliever or someone who do not know God came in. Now I am. I will play music and dance. No, because that is not your house. That's not a club. It's not a pub where you can perform or you can show. Or it's not a of any of the shows which they show on the, you know, on the television. My brother and sister in Christ. It's the house of God. Do you have a relationship with God before you take the guitar and play? Oh, because he's a very good musician. He will come to know. No. Because what will happen, you will be bringing demons along with you into the body of Christ. So instead of worship, uh, there will be no worship, there will be confusion in the body of Christ. You know why? Because the Bible says, do they belong to the tribe of Levites? Means today you must ask, is the person a Christian? But oh, we are looking for musicians, they will come and they will play. No problem in the church. It does not work out that way, my brother. You are defiling the body of Christ. You are defiling the temple of God. You are defiling the church of God. And that's why today, Jesus Christ says, My house shall be called a house of prayer. That's what happened when Solomon finished praying in the house of God. That the glory of God came and filled the temple. Hallelujah. You see clearly? They dedicated the temple. They did not joke with God in the Old Testament as how today people are joking in the church. Today people are joking. There's too much of humor in the church. Too much of comedy in the church. Too much of things they are doing uh, which does not belong to God. Because nowadays you don't see many Marys. You are seeing too many Marthas. You know what happened to Mary and Martha? Mary and Martha, Jesus Christ came. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening whereas Martha is busy trying to show her hospitality because she has a guest of honor that is Jesus and she wanted to show the best of hospitality she wanted to show all the guests that she was nothing left in coming and serving people but there was a time when the burden increased on her that she could not take any more she went directly to the teacher or she went to the master and says, Will you not tell my sister to help me? Because this burden has become too much. You know what Jesus Christ said? Martha, Martha, you are thinking of too many things. But what Mary has chosen shall not be taken. So what is the meaning of that? That when the minister is preaching the word of God, when the pastor is preaching the word of God, People are just busy doing things on their own. They are playing with their tablet, they are playing with their phone, they are calling, uh, they are doing this, they are doing that uh, because food is going to be arranged. Uh, so they are preparing the food. Uh, but where is the womb of God is saying, this is what the spirit of the Lord or man of God is telling, this is what God is telling to the church. But whereas Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and was listening, so what he did, uh, he rebuked who? He rebuked Martha and he said, stop worrying about these people of how you show your hospitality because you are not going to get a reward from them. You are not going to get a gift from them because your reward is from me. Amen. And that reward uh, Mary has chosen and what was the reward? That she was sitting at the feet of Jesus Amen. and listening to every word that what? The master was speaking. My brother and sister, what you understand? That when you go to church, you are going to meet God. 
you prepare your heart to meet God. Mm-hmm. That's what in Amos chapter 4 12 he says, prepare yourself to meet God. That's why Esther had to prepare for 12 months before she could meet an ordinary king in the book of Esther. So how much more you and I must prepare ourselves when we are going to meet the king of kings and the lord of lords. Do you have the garment of righteousness? Or do you have the garment of heaviness? Question yourself my brother and sister in Christ today. Because you are not going to meet people. Amen. When you go to church you are not going to meet your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Or you are not going to be oh I go to this ministry so that you know I get my visa extended. I go to this ministry so that the pastor, you know, they can help me. I go to church because I have a need. And when your need is fulfilled, you will turn your back and you will not come back. My brother, because your intention was not for God. Your intention was for something else. You went to church. And today the Lord is speaking to each one of us, my brother and sister in Christ. Even to me, I just stand on this podium and I minister the word of God. Because God... Rebukes everyone. He does not care whoever you are. God does not show partiality. He is not a respecter of person. He is a God who does not show favoritism, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's what clearly today the Lord is speaking to each one of us. And we need to know. And that's what even in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 and 4, see what is uh, Paul telling to Timothy. Let us look into 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 and 4. Let's look what the word of God says here. See what is speaking, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all loving, long suffering and teaching. He says convince, rebuke, exhort, all. rebuke. If there is someone who is doing wrong, what you need to do? You need to rebuke. Not say, oh, okay, if I rebuke this fellow. Next Sunday we will not come to church and now if we don't come to church, he is giving offering, he is giving uh, tithes. Uh, what will happen to me? How will I run my ministry? Oh God, how it is? But in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, they totally depended on God. Mm-hmm. That's why Paul was able to say, but the Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't have to worry for people. That's why they never compromise. They never Compromise, they rebuked. Even when Anias and Sapphira sold off their property and sold off their house, they hid some and they said, He says, Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? Peter rebuked her immediately in the church. He said, Oh, no problem. You at least bought 50%. No. Okay, le. keep the 50%. He didn't tell. He said, Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? Now, death is at your doorpost, he said to Ananias. And after that, his wife did the same mistake what the husband did. And he said, there, the dead body of your husband is there. You also die. I'll tell you, the power of the Holy Spirit was so powerful in the church. Hallelujah. Then Peter said to her, how is that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door. They will carry. You know, the church in those days, the holiness, you can't play in the earlier apostle church. You know, they set you on the face, whether you are prime minister, whether you are president, whether you are king, or you are queen, who you are, whether you are the biggest celebrity or you are the biggest businessman or whether you are Bill Gates, or whoever Steve Jobs or whoever you may be, they didn't matter. That's why the prophets in the testimony in the Bible, their kings feared them. When John the Baptist is coming, Herod is fearing, is shivering like a leaf. They feared, you know why? Because this prophet came is now I am in trouble. Hmm. When a prophet entered into the palace, the king is to fear in the Old Testament and New Testament. We don't know now what God is going to see. What God judgment going to. They said directly. That's what when John was sent to Nineveh. He said by 40 days God is going to destroy the city of Nineveh. One word he said. The king shivered and immediately. The king had the fear of God. He humbled himself. He wore such clothes. He removed his crown. It said all comforts, everything. Stop. It is time now to seek the Lord. It is time now to repent of our wicked and evil ways. And he made a proclamation that everyone must humble themselves by wearing sackcloth and putting ash on the head. Including, you know, who? The animals. 
what wrong the animals have done but he made a proclamation in such a way that even the animals had to humble themselves and when god saw that they humbled themselves and turned away from their wicked ways and repented the anger of the lord was lifted from the city of nineveh during the time of john the prophet they just gave a word and went up they didn't care who you are that's what daniel also when there was the writing on the wall mean mean ted shekel a writing the bible says that balthasar was troubled in his spirit and they said oh this writing is uh, you know troubling me i cannot have my peace they said there was a man during the time of your father and your father lifted him up who has the spirit of god who has the spirit of jehovah his name is daniel he will come and he will read it they brought daniel so oh, daniel we heard of you that you have the spirit of god and that you can read any writing and understanding he says if you do this i will make you the third ruler of uh, my country i will give you gifts uh, i will give you rewards uh, i will give you even a necklace of gold uh, come and read uh, because these writings which are on the wall is troubling my spirit uh, i have lost my peace uh, i have no more peace i'm not able to sleep you know what daniel said He said that Daniel answered and said before the king let your gift be for yourself and give your reward to another yet i will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation next was let's see what the word of the lord says clearly hallelujah and immediately we see clearly we see that god he revealed it daniel revealed what was troubling belteshazzar and you know what he said to night you will be killed that night belteshazzar was killed and slain by a king who was 62 years old darius prophecy fulfilled he said ah, you are giving me gold oh you giving me the third position that's what i was looking for that's what i was looking for like haman haman was looking that he will be exalted during in the book of esther uh, he thought that the king will reward him the king will give his best robe the king will uh, put a crown on his head and make him ride the king's horse haman was looking for that but whereas daniel was not looking for honor riches and gifts he said keep it uh, to yourself or give it to someone else but i will tell you that is the true man of god that is the true pastor that's the true priest to rebuke and say this is what god is telling you believe it or don't believe that's it hallelujah the bible says clearly whatever house you entered uh, if there is no peace in that dust your feet walk away from there and come that's what jesus christ said clearly they never compromise the word of god the disciples never compromise their faith in god even paul even jesus even John the Baptist they never 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 compromise the word of God for anything uh, with valued nothing to them hallelujah my brother and sister in Christ Amen. and God is looking for such type of people who have the zeal for him Amen. will not compromise as lord i will speak i will speak even at the cost of my life i will not fear anyone hallelujah Amen. god is looking Amen. for such type of people that's where there are many Amen. who are defiling his church there are many who are defiling his house because he says my house which i have made because you know god has first said it to david david had in his heart we know in psalm 132 he says i will not slumber nor sleep till i build the house of god there was a desire if you look into second samuel chapter 7 verse 2 when god gave rest to david from all his enemies he had it as i said i myself was living in the house made of cedar wood but where is the ark of the covenant here He is dwelling in tents, sir. That was the desire. Immediately, God sent Nathan and said, "Go and tell my servant David, will he build a house for me? Because I have wandered too much in the wilderness. Will he build me a place that I may dwell among my people? And that's what today God wants to dwell among His people in the church. But the priest or the pastor or whoever it's ministering." has defiled the body of christ people are you know they are coming you know they are not purifying themselves they are not sanctifying themselves that's why i told you something during the time of king hezekiah the levites had to sanctify themselves before partaking this amen they had to separate themselves they had to sanctify themselves if they didn't sanctify them they partook of the passover you know what happened immediately the penalty was death that fear was there but today 
when you institute the holy communion any person will come and any person you will give any person will take because if you tell anything to them they will be offended and you do not like to what you do not like to offend the church you rather compromise your faith and say it is okay don't worry but you like to offend jesus but you don't like to offend the people because if i tell they will be offended and they will leave the church and go and if they leave the church and go how am i going to pay my bills how am i going to pay the rent how am i going to look after my family how am i going to plead the church for which god has given me my brother and sister in christ for he who faithful god is faithful for he who is faithful in few things i will make you ruler of many and great things jesus christ said because it is his church you don't have to pay the bills and the way i pay the bills it is his church because he said upon this rock i build my church so there are many people oh this is my church oh this is my church this is my church which is your church did jesus christ is your church it's not your church this church why because in the book of colossians chapter 1 verse 16 17 what he says clearly he is the head of the church who is the head of the church jesus he is the head of the church second thing i told you he has purchased the church it is blood so his response that's why you see when the the temple solomon's temple was built uh, solomon did, did not even pay a penny from his pocket that they brought the wood they brought the nails they brought the gold they bought the silver and they bought even the manpower laborers they came and the who they built there show me any way in the scripture where david is telling i put from my pocket and i build the house of god or show me any way the solomon is telling you know all what god gave us i put inside no favor of god they came and they gave and with that not only they came and they gave they also designed it according to the demand of god how we wanted it he wanted it perfect and that's why today jesus christ is looking for a perfect for a church without blemish spotless church let me tell the last verse before i finish if you look into what church is coming let us look into ephesians chapter 5 and verse 27 let us see what does the word of god says before i finish my message here. ephesians chapter 5 and verse 27 let us see what the word of god says that he may present her to himself a glorious church huh glorious to the church needs to be be the glory of god not having spot or wrinkles or any such things but that she must be holy and without blemish, blemish. you see that how many words use that that he may present her to himself a glorious church not having a spot or wrinkles or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish, blemish. why it is mentioned here her because the church is always known as her because the church is always known as a bride and jesus christ is always known as the bridegroom so jesus is looking for what type of church is looking for a glorious church without spot or wrinkles or any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish why because when we go to heaven we will marry the bridegroom and that is known as the marriage of the lamb which is in the book of revelation chapter 19 if you read 18 and 19 you see clearly 18 i think it is there the marriage of the lamb we see 19 chapter we see the marriage of the lamb where the bride will marry the bridegroom mm-hmm. where christ will marry the church hallelujah